to Vest with Uncork Canvas. I'm Rebecca. Today we're going to do a DIY macrame mermaid tail. So let's go tie some knots. <laughs> Okay, so we're going to go over what supplies we are going to need for our project. So we have our corkboard to start, that's just going to be to pin your project onto, which will just make it easier to tie knots. Your cord, of course, which we're using this beautiful teal or turquoise, turquoise color. Sea foam. Sure, sure, sure. Fabulousness. Um, we're also going to use this keychain dongle or hardware, if you will. And then we're gonna have dye to dye this bottom piece, scissors, a measuring tape of some sort, and pins to hold your um, piece together. As seen oh, here. Yes, as seen there, both here. You have to have gold ones. Or it's, it doesn't work if you don't have gold ones. Right, right, right. Um, you also will have a comb, and that is just to finish this piece off and comb out the little tail. I don't recommend combing real fish tail might be. So you ready to get started? I, I'm not ready, but I'm willing. Well, and that's almost more important, right? It is. Let's, it is okay, and we're in it. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is you're going to grab your cord, and we're going to cut eight pieces of this cord at 30 inches each. So the easiest thing I do is measure that first piece out, and then you're going to use that piece to cut the remain, remaining ones. To use it to size the next pieces. Yes. Cool. So there's one. And I'll slide that over to you. So like I said, just line them up and just use it to cut your next seven pieces. Well, I just want to know if they're not exact. Like, look at this descending. <laughs> that's fine. It's completely fine. We're that's sending just, you that's not a little bit extra so that you can make sure you have more. No, wait. One, two, three, four. <laughs> you did this. Did you take one of my strings? <gasps> How would I have done that? Look, I'm missing one, too. Mm. I, like, I was if just, I was that good, we caught I, it on film, and I'd like to actually see that. I was actually just making sure Eight. that you were paying attention. What's all this for? Can I have... That's just extra in case you cut your strings a little bit longer than what we're supposed to. Or okay. maybe make a hair tie, a Aww. cat toy maybe. That'd be cute. All right, so the next thing is we're gonna start adding these strings to my favorite, your keychain. Right, so the easiest would probably be to put these strings onto your keychain hardware first and then we'll pin it down because we're gonna use the strings to kind of hold that down. So this is a lark's head knot. You're gonna start with a piece of cord Fold it in half, which will create a hoop on the end. You're going to put it over whatever you're working with and feed those free ends through that hoop. Pull tight. And that's a lark's head knot. Slide that through your keychain and then feed these um, free ends through that hoop. And we're done! You know what? I do feel like I was more successful this time. <laughs> I think I. I feel victory. You're, you're going to do you're that. good, right? Yes, yes. Okay. You're just going to do that with the remainder of your string. Okay, so next step is we're going to attach this keychain to this cork board. I, I'm just moving my little pins out of the way. Make sure all your knots are nice and tight up there. And all I'm going to do is in between this little knot here, so between two of the strings and the end here, is where I'm going to put the pin. So right here, I'm going to put it right above that. Right like above? Yep. Oh my gosh. And you're going to do it there. It and then you're going to do the same thing on the opposite side. Okay, so our next step is admire your work so far. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And we're going we're gonna to get through this. So our next knot we're going to do is called a square knot. And we're going to do the, that all the way across the top twice. Okay, so you're going to start from 
We're going to start from the left side, and you're going to take four strings from the left side. We're going to do our first Stay. square knot. Stay. So you're going to, basically those two strings, we're going to tie knots around the two strings. So this is going to be a square knot. You're going to start by taking your left string, creating a loop. Pull your right string over the top of that first string. Go under the middle two, up through that first hoop. And then you're just gonna pull tight Put on the opposite side. So make a loop on your right side. Put that string over the top, under your middle two, and up through that hoop. Pull tight. So we started with the left side, which created this loop here. We're gonna do that same process, but create the loop on the opposite side. So we're gonna start with the right side, pull that left string over that first one, go under your middle two, up through the loop, pull tight. Left side, make a loop over the top, under, through. So you're gonna make a loop with your left string that crosses over those two middle. And then you're gonna take that right string and you're gonna bring it up and over the top of that one. Go behind your two middle strings and then up through that hoop that you created with your left string. So you're going to be looking for something that looks, I guess, like a little bit like an upside down heart. And mm -hmm. then all you're going to do is just pull that tight to the top. Don't watch me. I'm not gonna don't watch, watch. You. I'm not gonna watch. Don't watch. This is fine. Everything's fine. She has done this before. I, I let's not give them false <laughs> hope. It's there's a vague memory. I blacked out. It's fine. I, I tend to do that too. You're gonna do that same thing on the right side. So you're gonna take your right string, fold it over the top of your middle two strings. The left string's gonna go over top of this left right string. Uh -huh. You got it. <laughs> We're gonna go under our middle strings. And through, through that hoop. Okay, it's so the opposite. So again, that upside down heart, and then just pull tight. Just like that. How's it look? Don't look! Okay, I won't look. But how tight should this be? It's up to you um, if you want your work to be super tight. This finished piece here has a I like my knots very tight, so that's what this finished piece is, but I've seen other people do very loose knots, which both look great. It's just kind of up to you. So we're going to do the same process again on the same strings, so, but we're going to start from the opposite side. Mm. We want to create this little string here. We want to have another one on the other side. So we're going to start with our right string this time, Okay. but same knot. Make your loop over, under. Through. You're gonna hear me say that a lot, so it's fine because I like to forget things pretty quickly. The same thing, but the left side again. So make your loop over, under, and through. <laughs> this is again just called a square knot, which that is wasn't that pretty. A pretty typical knot in macrame. And you're going to be, once you finish that one, you're going to be done with that first string. We can move on to our next couple. If you're Rebecca, you might need to watch this video a couple times, but... That's fine. It's just, it's like when I learn how to, I have to relearn how to knit every time. Well, knitting is much harder than this, so I, I promise this is, Okay. We're going to get through this. Okay, so you're ne we're moving on to our next four strings. <laughs> we're going to do the exact same thing. We're going to do that for following strings as well but I'm gonna walk you through that knot again so we're gonna start with that on the left hand side again yep okay that's a backwards four yep and then so over under through and I use my thumb I don't know what Miss Rebecca's doing over there. No she one told knows. me not to look. Don't look. But I use my thumb to kind of brace or hold this um, string, these two strings down here while I pull my knot tight. That up does here. feel smart. Um, so we're, we're gonna do the side. same thing, um, but we're gonna do start with the right side. You're right. You're right. You're right. I almost did the same thing though. So. Cool. <laughs> you looked right at my like. Ugh. I was like, mm, that doesn't look right. <laughs> I meant your string, not your work so mm -hmm. far. Mm -hmm. So again, repeat that same series of knots that we have been doing. So you'll have a total of, it's 
basically two square knots, but you're tying knots on each string four times. Yeah, so the square is two of them together. Correct. So what you're kind of looking for on this piece is, it's a little bit harder to see on smaller string, but this string here, we're mimicking that right here. And we're just kind of, just so it makes it more flow a little bit better instead of having both these lines on this side, both these lines on this side. So we're just trying to make it look, look pretty. Okay, ready to move on to the next sure, one? Why not? Okay. Why? <laughs> why not? <laughs> so we do, do you get okay. It's fine. So we're gonna actually start so that it's kind of reverse on this side. Cool. We're gonna start with your right string first, and you're gonna go the same thing. Make your loop over, under through that loop. <laughs> Use your thumb to brace it or let it fly around willy-nilly like Rebecca. <laughs> I thought you weren't looking. I wasn't, I wasn't. And same thing on the left side. Do you want a tight one, this one? I'm trying. And you can on these first knots. Once we get down to here, which I will explain, sometimes you don't want to pull too tight or else it can affect your work a little bit. So these ones you can have pretty tight and it's, it's going to look the same. Mm -hmm. So we're going to do that again, but we're going to start with the left side this time. I'm so glad you're keeping track. Okay, so if you can see this, it will be, if you start on the right side, you're going to have that a, loop. That loop up here. Mm -hmm. If on that on that side. And then if you start with your left one, you're gonna have loop your strings. Yep. Yeah. So that's how I remember. It mm -hmm. took me a while to figure that out, but once you get it, it, it makes keeping your place a lot easier. So again you're just doing two square knots on each of these strings and we're just gonna finish that up on our last four here. So, oh, guess what? Gosh. Oh no. I mean, oh yeah, what's up? <laughs> we get to repeat that. Sweet. Again, and again, and then again. Okay, so you're gonna have- I'm so good at this. <laughs> two of your strings on either side, we're not going to use. So then what we're gonna end up doing is more square knots on these series of strings, okay? Cool, I got and We're it. just gonna do it. the same thing, you're gonna do double square knots or just two square knots. And this one, because it really doesn't matter what side you start on, your work is still gonna look nice. I'm just particular about my details, so I like to kind of make it match on either side. So because I have this loop here on the left, this one on the right, I'm gonna start with the left one right here. <laughs> Not So it's left loop, Mm -hmm. Right string over. Mm -hmm. Pull that right string. This is starting to feel familiar. Yes, that's good. Okay, so you're going to pull this one up to the bottom of those last ones that we did. I mean, you can't really go anywhere else. And you're just going to do the opposite side. So right side, right loop, over, under, through. So you're going to do this again, but no, starting but on the, the other right. side. Yep, because we're doing double again. Getting a little bit of a rhythm, but will, please don't will. stop telling me what to do. I will not stop telling you. So Thank same you. thing, you're going to pull that up tight to the bottom of that other knot. You're doing great. I think it looks great. And then we're going to do another, another box knot. Yeah, so we're going to start on the left. So do, don't stop telling me what to do. I'm don't not going to tell you, to tell you stop doing what to do. I felt abandonment for just a nope. brief second there. Flashbacks nope. to a darker time. Just letting you finish what you were doing. Oh no, do you mean I... Okay, so like <clears throat> two box knots. So we should have... Yep. So next four strings. Now those ones can go off to the side. You can always use your pins to hold pieces in place for you. This one doesn't move around too much, but you can always place a pin anywhere. So Just I keep things out of your way yeah. so you don't pull something in. I can always place a pin there, and that will oh, just like kind of keep it from holding. I get a stab something. Moving around. Take your rage out. Yeah. Right. But I, this piece I'm pretty good with just those two, but 
Oh my god. And you could just keep moving, yep, moving those strings or moving those pins to different parts of your knot so I that really it like holds that. that in place. But I feel less vengeful now that I've stabbed something again. Good, good. All right, so we're gonna do the opposite here. Um, one, we're gonna start on the left side. Yep, we ended on the left side, so we're going to start with the right string. So the whole thing that we're doing here is kind of obvious now that we're tapering the tail by kind of continuing to bring the knots in. Mm -hmm. So, because our next series will be doing the same thing because Rebecca needs practice, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay, so I need to take out four on either side. Yeah. And okay. those go away. Yep, so we're going to... I need a hair clip. <laughs> yes. Yeah, so these ones are not, you're not gonna use these strings, so they can just be up and out of the way, and then we're gonna do square knots on this part. Ready? Nope, let's do it. What side do you think we start on? Um, last one's on the left side, so we should probably start, I actually, oh, what do you mean? Oh, okay, oh no. Um, the left side. We're gonna start on the left, that's right. Start with the right. That's right. <laughs> We're going to do one more double square knot right here in the middle. Oh, these four strings. Finish this that one, tapering. we're gonna go off of this knot up here because it's in the center. So that means start with the right? We're gonna start with the left. Obviously. <laughs> <laughs> when I was in elementary school, we were doing square dancing. Wow. I did square dancing because I was homeschooled. So I should know how to square knot, right? No. That doesn't carry over <laughs> at all. But I was doing... I mean, there's steps involved. <laughs> so that was your right side you're going to start with. So do that left. Finish that. Or finish that part off. Start with your right. Finish with your left. And then we're going to do again. It's not good. <laughs> All right. But I was in elementary right. school. Oh, yeah. That's right. There's a story. And I... We were doing square dancing and I kept forgetting what was left, what was right. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So they had to literally write a permanent marker left yeah. and right onto my hand. I would just stick with the cowbell if I was to join your band. Cowbell's fun. It, it really, there's always you feel the power cowbell. of a cowbell. So Everyone notices it when you do a cowbell. At this point, we have created kind of our V shape here. Now, v for victory. V for victory. Uh, we're <laughs> going to do this. I guess bottom of the fin part, and it's gonna look different on both sides, but both sides are very cute. Um, fix that tail of yours, miss. So we're gonna do a double, what's called a double half hitch, but we're just gonna add an extra knot onto it. So it's supposed to be two, but we're just gonna tie three 
So we're getting hitched. So yes, we're getting hitched now. This is a double half hitch knot. Start with one string from either side. This will be your guide piece. So we're gonna take this piece and move it down to the other side. Keep that one on top, hold it in one hand. The other side, you're gonna go over the top of that string, under, pull through, pull that tight. Repeat that process. So over the top, under, through, pull that up to that first knot you made. That is a double half hitch. Keep holding that guiding string, go over the top, under, through, pull it to your first double half hitch that you made. And you're gonna repeat that again with that same string, over, under, through. So we're going to, all this really means is that we're gonna take <clears throat> this string on either end and we're moving it to the middle. So you're gonna have this string follow you all the way through this process. I hold this string in one hand the whole time and you're holding it in the direction that you're going. So we're going down to the middle, over the top, and then through that hoop. Good. And then you're just gonna pull very good. <laughs> very good. Pull that tight. How so this, tight? How so tight? this first one you can do pretty tight. It's not really gonna do anything because all you're literally wrap is doing is wrapping that string around. So it's not right. necessarily a knot, mm -hmm. but you want to pull it up to the end of there. And you kind of want to pull the string like this way. Like you want to yes. pull this one outwards, right? Yes. Okay. So you want to pull that up and then we're going to repeat that two more times. So you're going to go so over three the, times total. Yes. Over the top of your main string, the string that's going to follow you and then just under and through. And this is where you can pull it tight because now it's officially kind of a knot. Officially. Officially. <laughs> a mermaid Lee. <laughs> I'm not right. <laughs> I try. Okay. And then just do that one more time. So three so times three total. Three times total. And then you leave Leave this that one alone. You're done. Yes. Stay. Okay. And that's just, so normally you would do a, just do that twice, but because mm -hmm. we did double on each one of these, we're just filling in that space. So it's just a fill up space. Mm -hmm. okay. And you're going to do that again. So I just keep this string laying over the top of those strings and you're just going to do that exact same thing over, through. Repeat that process on the same, or on the, this opposite side here, and just make sure that last one is pretty tight so it stays nice and snug up there. There we go. So those can be pushed off to the side there. And then, so sometimes your brain automatically goes, I'm on a different side, I'm gonna do different things. Mm -hmm. So just remember to keep your main string, so that's the string all the way on the end at the top here. Make sure that string okay. comes across this, all your other strings mm -hmm. in the direction that we're trying to create here, which is down towards the bottom of our work. Mm -hmm. And we're gonna do the same exact thing, but just don't over, I tend to overthink it sometimes. So we're over that string right now with mm -hmm. your main string. You're gonna go over, and then pull it through. Okay. And pull it through. It feels simple. <laughs> yes, because it, it is. It really is. And you're doing the same thing three 
three on each of these strings, three little knots on each string. So on this side, I was just missing that last string, mm -hmm. so I'm just yeah. going. Doing, finishing that part off real quick. I think it looks amazing. Thank you. There's a lot of rage in here. <laughs> now that we're at the bottom of our work, we're just going to actually tie the middle, just like if you were tying your shoe. So just cross over okay so like okay so all you're gonna do is just like you're beginning to tie your shoes where you're cross over this feels like a box knot Ooh, it's kind of like not yeah but without the innards and you're just doing that to finish off that piece in the middle still there. feel like it's a crab looking at me Look just at that. do it one more time but you can see how the pins definitely do help what is kind that of hold your what is <laughs> hold your That's piece cool. in the middle what happened? That's it. And when you tie that, oh, your, shoes. Oh, shoes. your strings are gonna wanna fall on either, it doesn't matter what side those strings end up going on. So our next part is easy. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It's a repeat of what we did up here. But all we're doing is using strings from the outside with the ones in the middle. Does that make sense? Cool, bro. So you're gonna have your two center strings and then to create this kind of inner tail or the bottom of the tail here we're just pulling these ones in and we're going to do a box knot with those so you can leave these strings out there like that and you're going to pull your top outer strings down to the middle and then we can start with a left knot <laughs> don't ask me we'll see we finished with the right side on that one Did so we? we're going to start with a left on this one so you're just going to do that same square knot where we make a loop here and How then, tight should it be? This one, you don't want to do too tight. So I'll show you once we get to dare. that part. Yeah. So all we're going to do is that left loop right over that, under, through. So you're just creating oh, yeah. that so upside down too heart. tight. Look at that. Yeah. If you do it too tight, then it will go all the way to the top. So all Which we're is a doing look. is like placing bottom. it we're yep. placing it more than tightening it so what you could do if it makes it easier for you is once you get that one tied that first piece tied you can take one of your pins <gasps> oh, and really? put it right in the middle of those two middle strings and what that's going to do is keep your knot when you go to the do your other one from moving up yeah so then we're gonna go right. Yeah. So we're gonna finish that square knot off. And we're only gonna do one part of that square knot. Or so we're just gonna do one square knot there. And then you're gonna leave those strings that we just finished mm -hmm. off to the side. And then I can tighten. Yeah, you can <laughs> tighten that up there because that pin is gonna hold your place there. So then we're gonna grab again from the top pull it down to the middle here and I try to keep the finished strings separate from the ones that we still need to work just so you don't end up grabbing it but you'll be able to tell which ones you have worked so keep these ones kind of up towards the top the finished strings down towards the bottom here and then what you're working with right in the middle and are so we gonna start with the right we're gonna start with the right <laughs> so you're gonna loop on the right side over that string, under your middle, and through that loop. 
and then this one so you're still going to be able to pull that tight up there so you can just keep moving your pin down if that makes sense mm -hmm. <clears throat> so you're not making it too tight and you're just looking for it to kind of make a little v so not too tight not too loose just right like a little bowl of porridge there's porridge yes we're gonna we're gonna put porridge <laughs> so then we're gonna go to the left side over under through your favorite mm -hmm. my new shirt mm -hmm. pull that one tight and again try to keep those already worked strings separate and we're gonna move on to our next top strings pull those down Last knot, which is on the right, and this one. Just make sure that one's tight. So if you want to move your pin down, you can and just make sure that one's nice and tight. Because guess what? Is that the last one? That was your last knot. Whoa! You did it. <gasps> I did. And that's your tail. And so, what you can do is all up to you at this point. So if you want it to look like this one. You would cut, I guess, this V mm -hmm, <laughs> mm -hmm. triangle, upside down V. Um, you're just going to cut those strings off so that we can dye it. You can draw a, an outline if you want and follow that. Or you can just trust yourself, which I believe in you. That. So you can fold it in half and then you would cut this way. Or you could do one side at a time, which either, either way works. Wonderful. I know. And then this, the other side, just try to mash it up. So if you just want to take your tail or your project and just fold that in half, which I've done in the past, and then you're just going to cut it. What the? <laughs> cut your tail at the same time rather than separate. But we're going to do both versions, I guess. Show both versions. Yeah. And Again, Rebecca's the example of what not to do. Do you want me to help you? No, it's fine. <laughs> <laughs> this fish has gone through some things. Okay, let me see. It's a metaphor. No, 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 let me see. <laughs> it's wonderful. <laughs> so then we can do the other way. We can do. Show you how to do it this way as well. <laughs> it looks great, Rebecca. So you'd want the middle of your tail to be the long or the shorter part. So you're gonna cut down at an angle. Just here. like this masterpiece. <laughs> Just like that masterpiece. So all I'm doing is This is like trimming bangs where you just like, I think I maybe went too far, but there's no putting them back. Nope, there's no putting it back. So maybe start a little longer than you think. That's right. So they it looks kind of funny. Looks like a normal fish tail. So then all you do to get your Thin action here is I you can just use a comb and try to brush through this directly I feel like that pulls out a lot of the string and mm -hmm. makes more of a mess so I will actually unroll mm -hmm. each string and then kind of use my nail or you can use like the comb through. and kind of separate pull those pieces apart yeah separate them and then once you have those pieces then you would be able to comb it. Mm -hmm. And that's what gives it this look here. Mm -hmm. All right, so then our final step. So once we get to this point, you can just be done and have one full mm -hmm. teal or turquoise 
tail or if you want this I will show you how to do that. Let's do it. So our next step is doing this dye. So you will be should I cut it? Should I trim the tail first? It doesn't matter because you you'll be able to cut it after, cut it after. as well okay. once it's dry. Be receiving this little vial <laughs> container tub tub of okay. dye. Big important thing: make sure because it's not going to want to open on its own. Squeeze the sides and opens real easy. So just make sure, of course, you're really careful that you don't like shake it as soon as you open it. And then you're just gonna the whole pour, thing. Yeah, you just pour that whole thing in there. So you could use like a pen or something to stir it. Mm -hmm. It's not like hazardous in any way. Just or wipe a it off. spoon. Just don't use at your home. finger. I use it's spoon. Hot. <laughs> it's hot. Spoons are a thing that people have at their homes. So you're right. That yes. is a normal thing. Okay, so once your dye is nice and dissolved in there, we're gonna start dipping. So you, Wicking. depending on how you want your dye job is, you can just put it in straight up and down. The way I got this was I kind of tilted it on either side and just to reach that mm -hmm. little tube that we created here. So I'm just gonna do an up and down. Okay, I'll do the side to side? Yeah. Okay. So you can see, and I just completely submerge it in as high as you want. I think I'm gonna go to the top so mine is just a straight line from the. Mm -hmm. I left a little bit of green up here. You can leave more, or less, whatever tickles your fin. Ah! <laughs> you can do whatever you like. Once she's done, we're gonna rinse these off in cold water until that water runs clear from your tail. So here we have them rinsed and all all done. They're wet, so they're a little bit darker than they'll end up being but this is them drying out. So how long should they lay out and dry? I let mine dry for roughly a day because with your little knots, they'll be a little bit wet inside of there. Mm -hmm. um, like I said, just okay. make sure you rinse your piece so that it's completely running clear of the dye. And if you want this lighter version, you would just add just a little bit of the dye. Mm -hmm. um, or if you want a darker version, you can do this. Or if you want a mixture of yeah. both, uh -huh. You can you can do a start, gradient. Yeah, you can start with the light, like a little bit of the dye, and then add more, and then just add a little bit That'd more. Be cute. And you can kind of move down your work to to make it that way. So cute. I think either way will be cute, um, but I think you did a great job. Today. Thank you. I think you did awesome job teaching. So thank, thank you. you. If you want them to be more where they stick out a little bit further, you can just use a little bit of hairspray, give that a little spritz, brush it through, and then that tail will sit nice and splayed out. Splayed out, I guess. And it'll and smell fresh. Smell fresh. A little less um, fishy. But either way, I think this looks, this is just a completely air dried, brushed out, and it still, to me, looks like a nice little Heck mermaid yeah. tail. And then just hook that to your keys or your purse and you are set. You created your very own DIY macrame Fish mermaid tail. tail. Well, thanks for joining us for this DIY macrame mermaid tail. We had a lot of fun with you guys and you macrame it. Ooh, <laughs> we got a little naughty along the way. We did. <laughs> but it was fun. Yes. <laughs> we'll see you guys next time. Bye. Bye. Make sure you like and subscribe so you never miss out on the next big thing from Uncork Campus. <laughs>